This video was originally designed to be something that I was going to release to just my consulting clients and students of my subconscious mind program. I decided to release it because I believe it'll really pull together the information that I've been sharing over the last 20, 30 videos in which we talk about the power of the subconscious mind. It's important to recognize that there's so much nuance and many elements to programming the subconscious mind. And there are some fundamentals that can help us do it, but this will be something that will be an ongoing journey for us for the rest of our lives. And the more we can share information and release the different kinds of truths that we find of what is within our subconscious mind, which is why I make so many videos on the subject, each containing many different nuanced distinctions, the more it can help contribute to the evolution of understanding what's in our subconscious mind and contributing to the lives of others. So in this video, I want to share with you four elements that I believe contributes and builds upon in a action oriented way, all the information that I've shared in my videos, as well as if you're a student of my subconscious mind program, and you're going to find this to be very useful. So there are four elements that I have found four modalities to help me evolve the programming in my subconscious mind, that are my go to's that I have discovered since I came across this information in 2004 through thinking grow rich. He dedicated a couple chapters one on subconscious mind and one on auto suggestions. And I used the processes outlined in the book and then through the process attracted much information to find my own unique modalities, which came as a result of the information that I had assimilated and found through others to create my own evolved processes that work really well when it comes to going into my subconscious mind and changing the programming within so I can align myself within at a subconscious level to the goals, the dreams, and the desires that I want to see brought forth. They are self-talk, environment, revision or imaginal acts, and subconscious mind audio. So let's get into some discussion here. Self-talk. Neville says, We are told that as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. But do we know that the man's thinking follows the tracks laid down in his own inner conversations? To turn the tracks to which he is tied in the direction in which he wants to go, he must put off his former conversation, which is called in the Bible the old man, and be renewed in the spirit of the mind. Speech is the image of mind. Therefore, to change his mind, he must first change his speech. By speech is meant those mental conversations we carry on with ourselves. What we say when we talk to ourselves, what we say when we speak with others, reveals who we are. It might appear that we are talking about the outer world as if it is fact, when in, in fact it is what we are believing about ourselves. As we evolve our beliefs, the outer world changes. Assumptions in the inner world harden into fact to our advantage towards evolution, divine evolution, or ourselves benefit to ourselves and others, or to the downfall, to the negativity, to the less than or disempowerment of ourselves, others, and divine and evolution. What has been brought forth in the outer world has been a manifestation of the minds that created it. And thus, the mind is the creator of reality. And as discussed in my last video, when the mind is aligned with the love or the heart, what happens is we learn to connect with our own inner voice of intuition. Through this process, we find our own beliefs to create reality in a way that is of benefit to us, others, and divine or evolution. And this is revealed to us by our self-talk. So thus, we want to adjust and learn about our self-talk. Adjust as in what we say when we communicate with ourselves, when we are by ourselves, in our mind with others, or to others in our mind, the mental conversations we imagine ourselves having with others, is programming our subconscious mind and creating accordingly. So upon revelation, upon reflection, we can change this programming within by changing our inner conversations. This requires the following four attributes that I found to be very useful. Observing your interactions with others and what you say when you talk to yourself. What you say when you talk to yourself, what you say when you talk to others, what do you say when you talk to others about yourself, reveals what's within your subconscious mind. 
What we are doing is finding clues to make the darkness conscious, as Carl Jung put it. Making the darkness conscious means finding aspects about our subconscious mind that we don't have awareness on, which we can reflect upon. One of the best things that I have found on this journey is to record my conversations. So when I do coaching and consulting calls, I record them. They're enormously beneficial for my clients, and they are enormously beneficial for me. I'm able to reflect back on the calls, study them, and figure out how to evolve my communication even further to benefit them and benefit me. As a result of doing this over and over again, I'm able to create a higher degree of behavioral or transformational change with my clients as well as myself. As a result of making these videos, I listen to them over and over again to find even more evolved ways of communicating to be of service to you. So thus, it's very important to observe the words, what we say, how we communicate, and the meaning behind our communication to recognize that this is a revelation of our subconscious mind. And as a result of revealing, we can evolve the programming within through self-talk. Observe the meaning you're giving to information that shows up via the five senses through your self-talk. When you are presented with information, when you read something on a blog or you read something on the news or whatever information that shows up to you via a video or an audio or some text, what is the meaning you're giving to that information? You don't have to take in the meaning the way it is given to you based on the beliefs of those that are giving you that information. You can change how you interpret that information. Now, you can look at this information and see it as contributing towards your goals, your visions, or your definite chief aim. And this meaning that you give to this information will help you understand this information better, evolving past limiting belief biases that prevent you from making the darkness conscious within and helping you to work with the information being provided to you to create the kind of success that you want. Observe the meaning you are giving to circumstances that show up via the five senses through your self-talk. Based on what happens to you, what is the mental conversation you are having about that circumstance? If something shows up in the outer world and it makes you feel disempowered or angry or frustrated, what is the mental conversation you're having with yourself as a result of that? Now, it's important to not shame yourself or judge yourself, just rather understand yourself and realize that you can change this mental programming that you have within with self-talk or the other modalities so you can respond favorably to that circumstance. You are either reacting from your past or you are responding from your future, your vision, your desired outcome. It's important to reflect upon how we respond via our self-talk. Observe the meaning you are giving to environment that shows up via the five senses through your self-talk. So you are navigating reality in different environments, the home that you live, the office or business that you work at, the country that you live, the city, the different environment that you are in right now reveals aspects about yourself, subconscious. You are there because you want to be there, consciously or subconsciously. What is the environment revealing to you about yourself? How do you communicate about your environment? Perhaps the environment is not in alignment with who you really aspire to be or in alignment with your higher self or in alignment with your desires or your outcome. And so the environment presents itself a certain way to you and it's not desirable. Now, rather than deny that, you can understand and change the programming within and you might find yourself in an environment as a result of changing the programming within via your self-talk that is more in alignment and in harmony with the reality that you want to live in. Or you can learn to evolve and have gratitude and appreciation for the environment. So you work with the environment, you accept the environment and be more in harmony with an environment that you're in because you know you have to be there in that environment for whatever reason. See, this is all about building a relationship with your subconscious mind. One of my favorite things that I have learned on this journey is building a relationship with my subconscious mind. What I say when I talk to myself reveals my relationship with an aspect of myself that is creating reality. It's a very important aspect of myself. We, each of us, we have this aspect. We have a subconscious mind. 
do we have a relationship that is one of harmony with our subconscious mind, or do we have a relationship that is one of anger, resentment, hatred, shame, and guilt when it comes to our subconscious mind? This is revealed by our self-talk. Again, we might assume that we are talking about another person. We're talking about some external world element. The conversation is happening in the mind, and the mind is creating reality. What we say when we communicate about anything, people, environment, circumstance, or information, is, yes, partially about what we see and we assume to be fact, yes. However, from a place of empowerment of the outer world being a reflection of the inner world and your ability to create the outer world based on your inner world, you take the power back by changing your inner conversations, your self-talk, and observe as it reflects outwards as thoughts, emotions, actions, and environmental changes. So here's a process that I follow. So what I do is I note conversational elements of my day that were not in alignment with my definite chief aim, my higher self, or the way that I want to live. And you can do the same thing. And it's important to release shame or judgment of yourself and others regarding your notes. So rather than looking at your notes and saying, this is the circumstance and I'm not good enough, or the other person did this or that, that is one that creates tension and anger within you, you release that. You simply reflect that the outer world is a reflection of the inner world. You release the tension. Then what you do is, what Neville says, put off the former conversation and be renewed in the spirit of the mind with a higher level of conversations. What is a better way of communicating with yourself about that element in your environment? This is where you tap into your inner voice. Or you could seek counsel to help you find a better way of looking at the aspect of reality, the interaction you had with the other person, the circumstance or the information or the environmental element. And as a result of changing your perspective or belief regarding that element, you'll find that you'll have a harmonious self-talk that is in alignment with creating what you desire. So the step to ensure that you are in alignment at self-talk is to reflect back on what you are saying, understand what you're saying, and understand how it is creating reality and changing the meaning within and releasing yourself from the shame or judgment of what has been created, rather moving into a place of understanding and committing to yourself that you're going to adjust your conversation to be one of alignment and support of the outer world and inner world, realizing that everything in reality is contributing towards the realization of your higher self, your definite chief aim, and your desired outcome. The next is environment. As you sow in your subconscious mind, so shall you reap in your body and environment. Joseph Murphy. When we look at the environment, the outer world, or the body, we have to remember that it is a reflection of what is in our mind. If we are unhealthy in mind, it will be reflected in unhealthiness in the body. If we do not have a high degree of self-love and self-respect for ourselves, we might result in hurting ourselves in the body by choosing certain kinds of environmental elements or behaviors that harm ourselves. Again, this is not to shame or judge ourselves. It's to simply reflect the cross-reference of cause in the inner world and the outer world and realize that it's not just the body but the environment, as in the people, environment, circumstance that reveals itself in the outer world in the different places that we navigate to the different places that we gravitate to, the different realities that we experience in the outer world that are the current state of where we are right now, the predominant state. This predominant state reflects the environment in the inner world. So again, we change the pro programming in the inner world. The environment produces a lot of data that we can reflect upon and ask ourselves, why are we creating this from the world within? Most of creation of the outer world is a manifestation of past programming. When we change the programming within our subconscious mind through self-talk, revision, imaginal acts, or subconscious mind audios, which are my favorite, or many other modalities that are available, we notice that the environment changes. Our choice on the kind of environment that we go into is different. We no longer pick environments that hurt us, that bring us into a state of disempowerment. We choose the kind of relationships that uplift us, that empower us, that bring us into a higher state of consciousness that is more in alignment with our higher self. 
So we ask ourselves, is this environment, this outer world circumstance, in harmony with our being? Okay, when we're talking about being, we're talking about our higher self, the definite chief aim that we want to achieve, the higher self, or any way that we want to live. Is this outer world in harmony with our inner world? If it's not, then realize that we can change the programming within with self-talk, imaginal acts, or revision, or subconscious mind audios to externalize the environment that reflects the programming that we have consciously instilled in our subconscious mind as a result of the reflection of the environment and not judging or shaming what has been created, but rather realizing that the cause is within, and maybe some of the cause within is from past programming, but we understand ourselves, we accept ourselves, and change it within. This releases the tension. We let go of the grip that we have to the outer world environment that we bind ourselves to subconsciously through the gripping of energy and force that we exert, emotional force, physical force. Every time we apply emotional or physical force to the outer world, we are affirming the element that binds us to that element in the outer world in our subconscious mind. It is a form of affirmation. Always remember this. We actually have mirror neurons in our brain. And when we interact with others, these mirror neurons help us with understanding and empathy. One of the important elements of that also is to recognize that these mirror neurons also have the ability to mimic the people in front of us. So if we are in environments that are riddled with individuals that maybe are not in alignment with what we desire to create, we are mimicking their thoughts, their emotions, their behaviors, and that is a form of binding. Now, the binding is in the subconscious, so we change the programming within. We don't emotionally or physically fight the outer world or those people. We change the programming within, and we'll find ourselves desiring to go in environments or conversations or mastermind. This is why mastermind principle in Think and Grow Rich is so important. He speaks about surrounding yourself with people who share your vision and masterminding in the spirit of harmony to bring forth what you desire by surrounding yourself with individuals who encourage, uplift, and empower you. Again, upon reflection of the environment and the binding we have to the outer world based on the programming within, we can understand that the programming within can be changed via self-talk, how we communicate about those individuals based on either a perspective of tension, physical or emotional force, or the desire to use that, or to understand, accept, have empathy, and realize that everybody is in a different stage of their journey and to understand that they may be right from their perspective. And what you're going to do is honor your own perspective as you observe the environment evolving to be one in alignment with who you are, which is your higher self. Again, this is all about building a relationship with your subconscious mind. And one of the things we learned in this journey of building a relationship with our subconscious mind is that the subconscious mind does not do well with coercion. It does not like emotional or physical force. It works through a perspective of understanding, making the darkness conscious, having a conversation with ourselves within to the point of evolution of programming within to have it externalized accordingly. So here's the process that I follow when it comes to environment. Note aspects of your environment that are not in alignment with your definite chief aim, higher self, or the way you want to live. Release shame or judgment of yourself and others regarding the environment. Okay, just release the tension that you have towards yourself and others. Realize that this is probably a manifestation of past experiences in your subconscious mind that a lot of times comes from childhood. And upon releasing the grip that we have, we can then take this information, this data that we get from the outer world, and evolve the programming within by using the self-talk or revisional acts or imaginal acts or subconscious mind audios. Then ask yourself, why are you in this environment? Okay, upon releasing the reactivity to that information, why are you in this environment? Is this environment teaching you something that you need to learn? James Allen said in As a Man Thinketh that man is exactly where he needs to be, and as a result of changing himself within, he evolves past the environment. So perhaps you have to be in this environment because you have to learn something and you don't want to just run away from it. We don't want to move into a place of denial. We want to move into a place of greater understanding. 
Or perhaps this environment really isn't in alignment with your higher self or the way you want to live or your definite chief aim. Upon making peace with this, you can affirm within your subconscious mind a statement like, I realize more and more so each day that I accept myself and the choices of environments that I place myself in. Therefore, I gravitate towards environments that are in alignment with my definite chief aim. I choose to honor this way of being and I find myself automatically moving in the direction of harmony towards my definite chief aim through my choices of environment. As a result, people accept me and I accept them. All environments have a right to exist and I choose the environment that I choose to be in because I have a right to choose the environment that is in alignment with my dreams. I realize that my dreams come from the superconscious mind. They are a revelation of my higher self. I realize that the purpose of life is to evolve into my higher self and that environment supports the higher self. Now, I create affirmations like this. These are long-form affirmations, and I get into the nuances of why I do this in my subconscious mind program. The reason why is because this is how my subconscious mind and I have a relationship through this form of communication. Now, this may work for you, or you might prefer to use short affirmations, short I am statements. The key, again, is to build a relationship with your subconscious mind. The entire premise of this video are tools, modalities that help evolve the programming within and also help you understand how your subconscious mind works so you can be building a higher degree of relationship with your subconscious mind. As you've probably heard me mention many times, one of the greatest things you could do in life is become your own best friend. Realize that all the happiness, all the joy, the greatest relationship that you can have in life is the one that you have with yourself. And when you have that, it is externalized as people, environment, circumstance, and information that operate from that perspective. So asking yourself, why are you in this environment and making a decision accordingly based on that will give you information so that you can take that information and evolve your programming within your subconscious mind using one of the other modalities. So really, environment, there's two things you can do, right? You can change your belief within, or you can take the necessary action to evolve the environment or evolve past the environment. Sometimes you have to remain in the environment because it's something important to you. Maybe you have to evolve past the environment. Now, this is a really personal question. I can't answer this for you. Nobody can answer this for you. This is really personal to you. Your relationship with your subconscious mind is very personal. And it is facilitated through this kind of information and your inner voice, your intuition. Watch the last video I did. It's important to build a connection with your inner voice. If you don't do this, you're going to let the opinions of others control your reality. And as a result of that, you're going to have more programming in your subconscious mind that is going to break your sense of power within, which you have the power within, and it'll put you in a place of disempowerment or feeling that you are the effect of the world. Your objective mind is your guide and director in your contact with your environment. You gain knowledge through your five senses. Your objective mind learns through observation, experience, and education. As previously pointed out, the greatest function of the objective mind is that of reasoning. Joseph Murphy. So that was a quote from Power of the Subconscious Mind. So your objective mind is observing and reflecting upon what is in your environment and upon reflection, you use a conscious act of programming your subconscious mind. It's more about relationship building with your subconscious mind than it is programming. We just use that word. It's a conversation between the conscious mind and the subconscious mind through these processes by working with your inner world, your sixth sense, your imagination to evolve the programming within to reflect accordingly. But it's the conscious mind that reflects. And the more you find yourself doing this, the higher degree of consciousness you have. Consciousness is the ability to look at the outer world and recognize and evolve the cause within. So the more we do this, the more conscious we become of the different aspects that were once darkness in our subconscious. And then we have the ability to build a relationship with our subconscious through any of these programming, reprogramming modalities. The real truth is this is a conversation with the subconscious mind in a way that is resulting in the understanding relationship that you have with the outer world and the world within by evolving your conversation in the world within and as a result, having it externalized, relationship building. 
Another great tool that I use is revision or imaginal acts. Now you can do this by yourself. You can do this with an invisible council, as discussed as the invisible council chapter in Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich, in which you can bring different individuals that you admire into your mind and have a conversation with them, like a meeting, a mastermind in your mind to revise your days or revise your weeks, months, years, or a trusted advisor. Now, this revision or imaginal act is something that I had learned on my journey from originally Think and Grow Rich. But along my journey, I uncovered NLP and I uncovered concepts like timeline regression. So I've worked with others to evolve programming within. And there's plenty of information regarding timeline regression on YouTube, so I'm not going to discuss that to a high degree. But it's really working with somebody who is an expert, a counselor, a therapist, a coach, someone who has ability and someone that you trust, that's why I put trusted advisor, to go into your subconscious mind, revisit perhaps situations in your past that were very traumatizing. What I deal with here is subconscious mind programming for success and creating what you desire. I don't choose to get into trauma. Trauma is something that you want to work with somebody who has that expertise to go in to help you evolve and release traumatic situations from your past and the bindingness that it has on your present life and your future. If we have trauma from our past, we'll find ourselves recreating it in the current circumstances again, again, and again. And because it has been so deep and powerful to us from a negative perspective in our subconscious mind, a lot of times we don't want to go in and revisit it. So we block it out of our awareness. A lot of times when someone has trauma, they can't go in and remember that scene or whatever happened that created that trauma. So they really have to work with somebody. And I recommend if you have this, work with somebody who can go in and help you release that trauma that you have. So we're going to focus on revision and imaginal acts as a form of going and using this modality, which is very similar to timeline regression. Neville says, and God placed man in the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Now, when you read this story, you think it happened thousands of years ago. I've come to tell you that it is now. You are now in the Garden of Eden, and you think you are shut out or banished. You are in it, and the garden is your mind. But you need, like every gardener, you need pruning shears. For you have slept, as you are told in the second chapter, having slept, weeds have appeared in the garden, and the weeds are revealing themselves by the conditions and circumstances of life. For your garden is always projecting itself on the screen of space. And you can see by looking carefully at your world what you allow to grow in the garden of God. But you have a mission. You have a purpose. It is not to amass a fortune. You can do it if you want to. It's not to be famous. You can do it if you want to. It's not to be some mighty power. Again, you can do it if you want to. But simply to tend to the garden of God. That's your purpose. You are placed in the garden to dress it to keep it, that only the lovely things grow in the garden of God. Now, very important distinction here. He talks about you don't have a purpose to amass a fortune. You can do it. And your ability to do it is based on the programming that you have in your subconscious mind, your garden of Eden. If you have programming, negative programming surrounding money or a bad relationship with money, then it's important to use revision or self-talk or subconscious mind audios to change that programming within as I did it. And also, whatever else you desire to create, when done from a perspective of cleansing the mind, you'll realize if it's an ego-based desire or a higher self-based desire. As a result of uncovering this, you will choose to honor the higher self-based desire. And it's important to also pick anything. You know, when we're talking about these concepts, we're talking about it sometimes from a place of advanced understanding and evolution of relationship between the conscious, the subconscious, and superconscious. So wherever you are right now, you can get started by picking any goal, okay? just whatever goal you want, and committing to use this process to bringing forth your desire into existence. During the journey, you'll uncover elements in your subconscious mind that are not in alignment with your higher self, and you'll release them. And then as you bring forth what you desire, you'll find higher degree, higher, more evolved goals, and you'll continue this journey over and over again. For me personally, I just, in the starting of my journey, wanted to make money and get out of debt. That was my goal. And I did it in ways that involve emotional and physical force. 
And as I evolved, I started to tap into concepts like the Ikigai, Japanese form of doing what you love to do, what you're good at, what the world needs, and what you can get paid for. Then I also uncovered other aspects about building a relationship with money that I evolved through the programming within via these kinds of processes that we're discussing here to build a even more harmonious relationship with money and abundance and wealth and have it reflect outwards from a place of joy, bliss, and ease based products and services that are needed and useful. What am I doing again? I'm building a relationship with my subconscious mind. I'm taking a aspect in the outer world and saying, this is how I choose to live in the outer world, and it is who I am. It is aligned with my being, and I deserve this. And in order to deserve this, I have to identify the aspects, the beliefs within myself where I feel less deserve it and change the programming within. Now, these beliefs, as discussed, are revealed by the circumstances and conditions of life. So every day you have an opportunity to reflect back on what has happened to you. Every week, you have the ability to reflect back on what has happened to you. Months, years, a lifetime. And say, is this the circumstance and the energy behind the circumstance, the meaning behind the circumstance, is this something that I want to affirm again, again, and again through the outer world manifestations of it because whatever's in our subconscious mind will be brought forth to reveal to us about ourselves. And if what is brought forth is not in alignment where we want to go with where we want to go, we can use this revisional process. So how does this work? So we're going to discuss it from the perspective of self, invisible counsel, and then I've given you some ideas of how you can work with somebody else. It's a process called timeline regression. Look it up. And that's involving working with somebody else, although I have done it with myself and it does work. But always remember what I said earlier. When it involves deep trauma, you want to work with a trusted advisor because it's a very sacred space. The subconscious mind is a very sacred space. You have to really work with someone that you trust. And through the process of building a relationship with yourself, you will uncover those individuals that are trustworthy to you. You will also have a greater degree of trust with yourself. And through that process, you will build a relationship with your subconscious and this information that's being shared with you, you'll be able to work with it a higher, to a higher degree. A lot of times I find when individuals are unable to reprogram the subconscious mind using these processes, they have not built a good relationship with themselves. In other words, they don't believe that they can change themselves because they're in some way from a place of denial. And upon reflection and understanding and acceptance of themselves, they'll uncover processes like this and they will be able to go into their subconscious mind, either by consciously doing something like this. Many of these things we automatically do without even learning it, and we've always been doing it. And if you look back in your life, you'll realize you've always been doing this to some degree. It's just that you'll be able to work with this from a more conscious perspective to do it regularly because it's very important, as we mentioned, to consciously observe what we are assimilating in our subconscious mind what we are believing, and then continuously making a commitment to evolve our beliefs so we can create the success that we want. So here's how the revision or imaginal acts work. First thing you want to do is you want to note aspects of your day that were not in alignment with your definite chief aim, higher self, or the way you want to live. Again, you want to release shame or judgment of yourself and others regarding the event or the aspect of reality. And then in your imagination, ideally in the state akin to sleep, which is just about when you fall into sleep, which is a state of mind where the conscious mind is out of the way because, or mostly out of the way, the conscious mind has the ability to overly think and overly rationalize and keep you in the state of past programming that is creating your reality. So as we release ourselves from the grip of the conscious mind, we allow ourselves to be more subconscious and we imagine, we in our imagination, go and repeat the process of doing the imaginal act from the perspective of the ideal way that situation had occurred or we would have liked it to have been occurred in our life over and over again as our subconscious mind then go goes into belief that that's the way it actually happened. So let's say you had a dispute with somebody during the day. At the end of the day, you can imagine yourself having a conversation one that is of mutual benefit, benefit for you, them, divine, and evolution, to create a spirit of harmony. 
and play that in your mind over and over again as you fall asleep, along with other events that you have throughout the day that were not in alignment with your definite chief aim or your higher self or the desire that you want to see brought forth. Repeat the process again, again, and again as you start to feel a higher degree of peace and alignment and feeling that that's the way it actually is that you believe it played out. And you'll fall asleep to it. And what you'll notice is the next day, you will be a lot more gracious to that person. You won't be creating that relationship from the past. You'll be creating that relationship from the future, which is your higher self. Now, you can do this with different aspects that you have experienced in reality throughout the day. And you can do this through the imaginal act like this that I just mentioned. Or you could do this in a way that Napoleon Hill mentions in Think and Grow Rich, which is invisible counsel which is to imagine in your mind having meetings with people that you trust. It could be great leaders, people that you admire in the space of entrepreneurship, certain individuals that have certain qualities and attributes that you believe would respond in a certain way. You, in your imagination, have a meeting with them, sitting around a table or in a living room, having a conversation about the various events that happen throughout the day as they give you insights and perspectives to evolve your beliefs of how to go about looking at what happened from the place of empowerment, being in alignment with your goals and your vision. And also, as mentioned, working with someone with timeline regression is really a process of having somebody sit with you and go back in time to that situation through a process of creating a place where you feel safe with them. It's very important. If you don't feel safe with the other person, then you might not be able to do this. Now, someone who's really good at this can allow you to experience a sense of safety around them, and they are individuals who don't have, as Carl Jung mentioned, transference. In other words, they have evolved past that kind of situations and circumstances in their life, and maybe they never experienced it, or they have experienced it, and they've evolved past those traumatic situations, so thus they're qualified then to heal you from the perspective of subconscious mind. So you sit with them, you have a conversation with them, they take you back through a process into that moment where you experience the trauma, and they teach you through conversation, through imaginal act, they create an imaginal act for you, and they rewrite that experience. And when you come back to the present as a result of this process, you feel more empowered, uplifted, at peace about whatever happened to you. So again, revision or imaginal acts is simply going back and reflecting upon your day and imagining in your mind, ideally in the state akin to sleep, of how you wish it had been played out, whether it be an interaction with a person or a circumstance that occurred. Now, one of my favorite forms of working with evolving the programming within my subconscious mind is subconscious mind audios. Essentially, what I do is I record myself having communicated to myself from the perspective of understanding what has happened throughout the day, I can generate affirmations like I shared with you in this video. And using the processes and the different elements that I include in my subconscious mind program, which is about six to eight hours long, if you're interested in that, the link is in the description. I go in and create audios in which I play to myself over and over again to affirm what I would like to see as far as behavioral changes, thought changes, emotional changes, and reality, outer world-based changes. Very powerful. And I want to talk about these affirmations in a moment because I've got a lot of experience with them. Joseph Murphy says, The effectiveness of an affirmation is determined largely by your understanding of the truth and the meaning back of the words. In praying, use not vain repetition. Therefore, the power of your affirmation lies in the intelligent application of definite and specific positives. So in order to have any of these things that we're talking about work for you, any of these modalities, you have to believe. If you do not believe it's possible, it's not going to work for you. That's because by not believing, we create resistance. So thus we can create a sense of connection and belief in any of these processes by creating an affirmation that goes something like this. I realize more and more so each day that I develop a greater relationship with my subconscious mind. As a result, I'm able to communicate to myself in a way that results in transformation and behavioral change. 
thoughts, emotions, experiences, and outer world reflect the changes that I instill in myself through the modalities of evolving the programming within via my subconscious mind. And as a result, I build a greater degree of belief and faith in the tools that are available. More and more so each day, I'm able to see the changes. And upon reflection of the changes, I realize that I have the ability to change through these modalities. So I honor these modalities. And as I continue to honor these modalities, I develop a higher degree of power and confidence in my ability to reprogram my subconscious mind using conscious thinking, self-talk, affirmations, and other forms of revision or imaginal acts because I realize that by doing so, my sixth sense or my creative imagination impresses the subconscious mind and externalizes accordingly. I'm able to see this more and more so each day. Now, that affirmation is very long, so I'm going to talk about something here. Long-form affirmations, and again, I get into all those details in my program, versus short-form affirmations. Both of them work. It really depends on the individual. For me, I like the long-form affirmations because I take it from a perspective of creating a movie in the mind and playing it through a conversation. And the subconscious mind, just like working with a trusted advisor or an invisible counsel or imaginal acts, what that stuff does is mimics a conversation. Or So it is a conversation. You know, if you work with somebody in the outer world, trusted advisor, it's a conversation. A good counselor, a good therapist, a good psychoanalyst will have a conversation with you. The entire dialogue will seem pleasant. Same with a coach or a consultant. And upon doing that, the programming changes within and it externalizes accordingly. So that's being mimicked in a long-form affirmation. Now, short-form affirmations also work. In your imagination, ideally, the state akin to sleep is where you want to be doing your affirmations and also realizing that it is the same, very similar except auditory, when it comes to revision and imaginal acts. Now, I record these and play these to myself over and over again as I fall asleep. In a communication and in a voice that has been facilitated, as a result of learning and evolving my relationship with my subconscious mind. I repeat the process over and over again from a perspective of joy, bliss, and ease, knowing that the subconscious mind does not do well with force or coercion. The subconscious mind does well through relationship building. And what we're doing is building a relationship between the conscious mind and the subconscious mind. That's what's happening. So here's the process. Note aspects of your day that were not in alignment with your definite chief aim, higher self, or the way you want to live. Again, release the shame and judgment because that creates the tension. And you can even create affirmations to release shame and judgment. That's why I really recommend developing a relationship with yourself, being your own best friend, evolving to a higher degree of self-love, self-acceptance, self-esteem, self-confidence, self-appreciation, and doing exercises and even subconscious mind audios or reprogramming to evolve yourself because then what will happen is that the outer world circumstances don't have that much weight and grip let go of excess emotional meaning from lower states of consciousness, anger, fear, resentment, anything like that, that is not going to help you understand and evolve and identify the programming within that's causing it. And you'll be more at a place of peace and understanding with yourself and what is brought forth so you can change everything within. And so re releasing shame and judgment of yourself and others is very important. And the next thing you want to do is create or find affirmations that speak to you. Again, long-form long affirmations or short-form affirmations or a combination. It's really about finding the affirmations that speak to you. You don't have to take somebody else's affirmations and apply them verbatim. They may not resonate with you. Remember, the key here, the entire premise of all of this is to build a relationship with your subconscious mind. So then you listen to them on repeat and engage your imagination and your senses. Repeat the process over and over again from a place of joy, bliss, and ease. And you can even fall asleep to this process because that's how you go into state akin to sleep and use state akin to sleep where the conscious mind is predominantly out of the way to affirm what is being listened to via your imagination on your subconscious mind to create reality from the perspective of your affirmations. And finally, Joseph Murphy says, repeating an affirmation Knowing what you are saying and why you are saying it leads the mind to the state of consciousness where it accepts that what you state as true. Keep on affirming the truths of life until you get the subconscious reaction which satisfies. So you're going to get a feeling that is one of empowerment. 
That's how you know all this stuff is working. More and more so each day you feel a greater degree of empowerment, a greater degree of peace, a greater degree of love, a greater degree of understanding towards yourself and others. And this is how you know this stuff is working. And then in the process, you can make peace with whatever shows up in the outer world based on past programming using one of these modalities to evolve the programming within. If you want a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.